that stuff. That's an, a, an inflatable chest protector. You see that little flange that's coming out of the side yeah. there? You would just inflate it yourself and blow it up. Oh, come on. That's hilarious. Look at this stuff. And then, of course, the masks almost look like torture devices by, yeah, this, by our that's, estimation uh, today. It's like you're going to blindfold them at the same time. Yeah, Man in know. the iron mask. Yeah, this, sick. this is the first catcher's mask ever. It's actually the patent model sent to the patent office. You can see the tag hanging off the side there. Here's a 36 inch, 43 ounce in there. <laughs> That's it. We have some 48 <laughs> ounces in the collection. Some of the oldest bats, uh, the, the heaviest bats he ever ordered from Louisville Slug were 52 ounces in spring training in 1920. We're po pretty positive he didn't use them in a game. It was almost like a novelty. Like let's okay. let's have fun in spring training and see what we can do with this. So this first election is 1936, <clears throat> right? Where you get the famous first five with Ty Cobb and Babe Ruth, Christy Matheson, Walter John, and Thomas Wagner. The first ceremony is in 1939, where we actually, uh, the museum is open. We invite all the living Hall of Famers that were elected in those first four elections to come, and we have the first basic induction celebration. Completely different than today. I mean, Babe Ruth spoke for like a minute and a half. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Connie Mack spoke for two minutes and said how much he loved the game. Eddie Collins got up and said, yeah, what Connie Mack said, and he sat down. So it was very, <laughs> a, different, a different day, different time. But they all gathered for this group photo except for one person missing. Ty Cobb, per usual, was late and just didn't make it in time for the photo. But we like to have you guys kind of sit here and we get your photo with them, if you don't mind. And then we're going to get Don in there, too, with you. All right. Put my big fat head right by babes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that. People had forgotten that ladies play professional baseball. And that movie kind of brought it back to public consciousness. Um, but this exhibit's about more than just that. This is about ladies in the game from the 19th century to the present. I mean, ladies were playing college baseball um, as far back as almost men were, obviously wearing big bloomers, right, like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I thought the movie was very well done. And we have uh, female owners, lady owners. She was the first female owner of a team, Helene Britton, whose husband owned the Cardinals, and then he died, so she inherited the team. And then, um, of course, a main part of this story is the League of Their Own. <clears throat> Those are all authentic uniforms and tunics and gloves used by the ladies. Okay. Now, people are surprised by the length of that. The Ladies League lasted 11 years, 1943 to 54. People think of it as just a World War II thing, but it lasted all the way up into Korea. So this is a very popular attraction. This has been here for quite some time. This is Ted Williams' famous hitting chart. Oh, okay, yeah. So it first appeared uh, in an issue of Sports Illustrated in 1968, and that became the cover of his book in 1971 on hitting. That's what he says he would have hit if he were pitched in those areas of his strike zone as a left-handed batter. I think he's being awfully humble. He's only going to hit 400 when you throw it right down the pipe. Well, I always say that's the hardest ball to hit because you don't ever see it there. You don't ever see it there. Well, that's true. <laughs> But he's, a, he's telling us, yeah, obviously down and away was his yeah. most difficult. Two, three, he probably couldn't reach it. What about your strike zone? Did you have a particular uh, point where you felt that guys were trying to attack you? Um, it or varied. You know, I think I kind of got streaky at times. So, you know, with all the advanced scouting, they knew where I was struggling at that point. So I've always said as long as the pitcher was throwing it where I was swinging, I was great. <laughs> yeah, <You know>? right. <laughs> this is obviously a very popular case. Well. How they changed, right? So, let's see. so here, that's the here's one I, where I got that one. Little six. They, yep. gave, they gave oh, me they, one. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Is that at home? Yeah. It's at home. Yep. Yeah. That's in my safe at home. Here's where things go off the rails. Yeah. In 03. Crazy. That's just silly. Marvelous. Yeah. Well, didn't they make like three or four of them? Because they, they had the gaudy one, but then they had, well, and I had one smaller I've and smaller. I talked to some players that said they like they actually ordered what was the version of the ladies' ring. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, no so it wasn't a paperweight? I mean, that's literally a paperweight. Yeah. So we had some anniversaries last year, including, it was hard to believe it was the 50th anniversary of the Miracle Mets in 69, which is not Mike Schmidt, this guy here. Um, and we were talking about that last, uh, a little bit last night about, right, it's, you just always gotta play the game. You never know what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. On paper, the Mets had no business beating the Orioles in 1969, but they won the World Series and they win it in five games. So mm -hmm. you, you gotta play. Right here. This, 
So, what did you use when you, what were you using at the end of your career? Uh, C235. So what were the dimensions on that puppy? Um, 34 inch, and I think I went down as low as 31 and a half ounce just to yeah. be able to hit the impact pitch anymore. Very common, so yeah. players often, uh, you see that all the time, uh, as they get older, get towards the end of their yeah. career, lower the bat weight so they maintain the same bat speed, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's very similar, uh, you yeah, know, this is a trout, so this is uh, 33 and a half long, 31. Okay. So the weight would be very similar yep. to what you would have used at the end of your career. That was from a uh, home run leading off the um, All-Star game in Cincinnati. From another one of your teammates, so this was uh, after you left, but this is Pedro's almost perfect game for him. Nine innings perfect, but didn't score until the 10th. Mm. I think I was in one of them with Mark Gardner, but I think it was a no-hitter in L.A. Right. Yeah, and yep. that was a game before the game. Game before, I think Dennis threw was perfect. I think I think they were together. Yeah, right in, yeah. Back to back. <clears throat> so, what was Pedro like as a young player, as a young pitcher? Well, intimidating, and I was on his team, you know. <laughs> so, but you you knew what you're going to get out of him. And then, as, and then, in terms of facing him, then later on, it was yeah, it, it's it's an exciting at bat. You know, you you step in against these guys that are just dominating, and you know you're in for a for an uphill battle. Yeah. This is Gary Carter. This is 1981 All-Star Game. He hit two home runs. He's the last person to hit two home runs in an All-Star Game. He's also one of only five guys to have two All-Star Game MVP awards. He always shined bright when the spotlight oh, yeah. was on. There's lots of cameras there for him, <laughs> kid. I tell you, it's, uh, I don't even know where to start with it. You know, like I say, just to, to, to have this honor to, to be from north of the border. Um, so how much, how much have you heard from Canadians? Introduction. Well, I, the country itself, I've heard many rumors from what people are doing up there and how crazy they were going. So, um, and then you know, I'm going to be up there in a couple of weeks to, to do something up in Vancouver briefly, and nice. and uh, and I'm looking forward to that. But like I say, it's it's uh, to, to, to be the first position player, second Canadian. Uh, man, I, I don't even I can't find the words. I'm st stuttering along here because I don't know. Really, what Have to say? Have you happened to hear, hear from Fergie since then? He, yeah, I got a message from him, congratulating him and everything. So yeah, awesome. I mean, I've seen him at some events, and uh, uh, I'll see him in June. Uh, I think I'm going to go up to the Canadian Hall in June just because okay. uh, go see Justin Morneau going in. And well, I think there'll uh, be some special words between you guys in July. Oh too. yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> like, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, good panel. Beautiful. You do have a very flourishing signature. Wow. That's nice. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of those guys like, I never wanted to play baseball. I never, it was never a dream. And I don't know how about, how am I here? Very something altruistic, pure about it. 